you know, hard for the sons of men to do it either. You think you can do what you want to do because you don't care your head goes by. And people went back to killing you off the rip for doing stuff people had to share what you were doing. Go to Psalm 19 and 12. And that's, that's what people don't give you grace for, uh, for a thing or not. That, that, that gives them free license to sin. That gives them free license to do so. We discussed last night. You hear Christians in the Christian church mainly. So Hebrew Israelites, I know, would say the same thing and just do it in a different manner. How Paul was talking about, you crucify my flesh daily. I die daily. And saying, like, oh, I sin, but I killed that guy. How many times did it decide that? Anybody? I know you know. I mean, you gotta look at the question. You can answer Okay, then. So, why are you dying five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times? You put God to sin one time. So, if you keep dying, guess what you do? You put them to an open shirt. You're dishonoring his name every time. You gotta come back and say, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. That as you know, you might only get one shot to disrespect this man more than you Like, I ain't talking about cut you off and then you be reprobate up to my eyes. Like, go ahead and kill him. A man don't give everybody the same space to get it right as he give others, so you might get one there. You know what I'm talking about? I'm doing it. I'm going to do it. Anymore. But nevertheless, he says the law of Yah is perfect, converting the soul, which you already have dealt with. So you know the law is perfect, and if you walk within the perfect law, it will change your soul, which will be born again. The testimony of Yah is sure, making wise and simple. So it says the testimony of Yah, that's a sure thing. It's guaranteed words, and it makes you feel simple, it brings wisdom to you. The statutes of Yah are right, though his laws is right, rejoice in the heart, make you feel good on the inside. The commandment of Yah is pure, enlightening the eyes. So his, his word is pure, his commandment is pure, and it brings light to your eyes. And you know who the light is. So this is the part we want. The fear of Yah is clean, enduring forever. So we know that. How can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed and forth to that word? So we say the fear of Yah is clean, and if you fear him, you're going to endure forever. And what's to endure forever? Be filled with the Holy Ghost. So that's how you're going to be quickened and made alive. Because he said the, the spirit is what makes alive. And the word is, is spirit and life. He said, more to be desired are they, they, than, are they than fine gold. Yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. He said, moreover by them is thy servant born. And in keeping them there is great reward. So through his laws you born. You know the consequences of your actions. This is what the atheists that we spoke to the other night did not understand. You know what I'm saying? Like, how could he send people to hell forever? I don't want to. You do what you want to do now. Just know I don't want to do that. So don't cry and complain when I when I burn you up forever. Because I already told you what was going to happen to you. And you, you know, you roll the dice. You decided I'm going to take chances and do what I want to do. And hey, man, it's your soul. You do what you want to do. Just know you're going to have to pay for it. Proverbs 27. And that's what people don't like to deal with. And unfortunately, another thing that people don't like to deal with is but if people understand his God, preachers are supposed to be clean. They're supposed to be blameless so they can reprove and correct the people. And people don't like to be reproved and corrected. You know what I'm saying? They like to say you're judging people and this, that, that, and the other. But somebody got to tell you you're wrong. That's why that man has to be blameless. So when he comes to reprove and correct, you know that he's the same thing he's telling you not to do. He ain't doing it either. You know what I'm talking about? Because you don't want to hear nobody telling you not to do something. You don't want to hear that. So people don't want to be corrected for many reasons, mainly because of these reasons. And they don't like to hear that, but that just shows the simplicity of their mind. The Proverbs 27 says, The fear of Yah is the beginning of knowledge. For fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. So he said, The fear of Yah, that's the beginning of knowledge. If you don't even fear the man, you have to even began to have any knowledge. Because you can't even understand this man's words, you don't say it. It ain't even going to bring you no benefit, no profit. But the fear of y'all is not in the fault. And he said, but you know, fools despise with and instruct. You know what I'm saying? Simple people, dumb people, they don't want to be instructed. That's why he say, listen to what your people tell you now. And he say, and if you do that, it'll be an ornament of grace upon your head. You know who brought grace and truth in. You do that there, you're going to bring that spirit on you. You're going to have that anointing on your head. But nevertheless, we dealt with that. We're going to deal with it again by the Kyrie and Shakespeare. Y'all did again, because of the words that's in. Listen to what he said. He said, Then they that feared Yah spake often one to another, 
and y'all hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him. For them that feared John thought upon his name. So he said the book of remembrance was written for those that feared John. And he already heard the fear of y'all clean and enduring for that one. So if they name written that book of remembrance where they name that. It's in the book of life. And he say, and he thought about these when he did that for those who feared him and they thought upon the name of y'all. Because people do not fear y'all. A lot of people talk about y'all, but they don't fear y'all. And he's saying, they shall be mine, saith God, though, in that day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spare a son. His own son, that's so good. Because he said, if, a, if a, a son honor his father, he said, where my mom at? So he said, I'm going to spare you since you're going to serve me like a son serves his father. See, I'm going to make you my jewel. And like he said, then he shall return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serves God and him that serves him not. It's pretty much the same saying as in first John, the third chapter, where he says, those that commit sin are the devil. And those that are born of God sin not, and then through this the children of God manifest, and the children of the devil are manifest. So this is how you know which seed is which. You disobey, you're the devil seed. You obey, you're the God seed. It's simple. It's clear. Clean cut. Y'all don't pick no game. But let's go to Exodus 20 as we get ready to take it on up. So look what he should did to our forefathers when he gave us the lives, began to give us the lives of the oracles of the living word and the will. Exodus 20 and 18. And look how he came down when he spoke to the people. How he came down to speak to them. And it says, And all the people saw the thunder, and the lightning, and the noise of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. I just said that kind of try to picture that in your mind. You see the thunder and the lightning, you hear the loud noise of the trumpet, the mountain smoking. I think you pretty much be terrified. I mean, first of all, you know what I'm saying? That's what the people did. That's it. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. This is what the people say. You talk to him. And then you tell him what he said. Because, boy, we're going to die. I'm talking to people terrified and rightly so. And listen to what Moses said. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you that his fear may be before your faces that ye sin not. So that was the whole point. He was telling people, don't be scared, but God coming to try you now. So that his fear, that his respect for his word be in your heart so you don't commit no sin. That was the whole purpose of him doing that. Because I just tell people all the time, you don't talk to your children when they get out of pocket like, hold on a second. Get up there clean your room. Stop disrespecting them. Because I promise you, I'm going to do something about it. You're going to be like, well, you better tighten up before I hit you in your face. You know what I'm talking about? Because you got to let them know what. Why are you playing with this? You know what I'm talking about? Like, why well, over your behind in here? Who do you think this is? Because he's not going to respect that. You're not going to respect that to the point where that child knows, well, let me try my dad. But that going to do something about that. Daddy knows why I keep trying to go out and get a book. You know what I'm saying? You got to have that respect. And he's saying the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was born. So that means, look at Deuteronomy 14 and 1. Because uh, our people, we all the children of God, and we got to read. We're the children of Israel. But just because we his children by the covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we have to do like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did, which is trust and obey. Which is what many, many people do not want to do. And we're just going to deal with the first part of the book. We're going to read the rest, but I think it was this. You can tell. He said, Ye are the children of Yah, your God. You shall not cut yourselves nor make any bargain between your eyes for the day. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what the Canaanites used to do cut themselves up. But they are people. You know what I'm saying? That's why he told you don't get no tattoos. He said, don't print no marks upon you. Because that's what the people used to do. They cut themselves and put marks on their body for the day. You know what I'm talking about? And what do most people do when they get a tattoo? The rest of the peace tattoo, man, or they get pictures of people's faces. You know what I'm saying? I know when they do this follow in the world, but we ain't supposed to do it. Look at Father in the first It's going to tell you guys something about what the fear of Yah is. If you got the fear of Yah in you, this is how you're going to fear. It says the fear of Yah is to hate evil. So off the river, if you fear Yah, you're going to hate any form of evil. Period. You're not going to delight in it. You're not going to have any enjoyment in it. Period. Pride and arrogance. And you're going to hate a proud heart, an arrogant heart, and the evil way, and the rebellious mouth. Do I hate? 
So if you got a fear of Yah, you're not going to like, you're going to hate pride, you're going to hate evil, you're going to hate arrogance, you're going to hate the evil way, the evil way of anything contrary to the word. And you're going to hate someone with a rebellious mouth telling you to do things contrary to the word. You're going to keep you like, you can love one of them. Now let's look at Amos from Psalm 97 10, verse 11. Psalm 97 and 10 says, He that love Yah hate evil. So he said, If you fear Yah, you're going to hate evil. Now he just said, If you love Yah, you're going to hate evil. That's what I was just telling you before that the fear of Yah and the love of Yah go hand in hand in one of the same. And he's saying, He preserved the souls of the saints, He delivered them out of the hand of the wicked. You know, saints mean the holy one, holy being set apart. And the next section we're going to go to, we're going to see about that. Now let's look at Amos, the fifth chapter, and about the 14th verse. Because the, the, the fear and love, y'all, you have to love the things that he loves. You have to delight in the things that he delights in. You have to be willing to live his way and not your way. As Paul said, to live your life under him that died for you and not to live for yourself. And you know, not only to die, but Lord, to live for the dead. Amos 5 and 14 says, Seek good and not evil. He's telling you the same thing. Seek good. And what is good? That's law's ways. That's law, that's y'all's laws. That's y'all's ways. Love the good and establish judgment in the gate. And it may be that y'all God of hope will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. Oh, I'm sorry. And, 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 and so y'all, the God of hope shall be with you if you ask hope. Because many people talk about, you know, God with this at the end of the but they're doing evil, so he's not with you. He said, hate the evil and love the good and establish judgment in the gate. And it may be that y'all, God of hope, will be gracious unto the women of the day. Joseph. So he's saying, if you love the good and hate the evil, he's going to show grace and compassion unto you. You know what I'm talking about? But if not, you ain't got nothing to come. You're going to get your head scratched. Proverbs 9 and 10. Because you've got to have a fear of God in your heart. You've got to feel what man is. You've got to feel what he's saying. So somebody would made you hang up for many people because he already told you to begin in the knowledge. If you don't have a fear of young, you ain't even going to begin to have knowledge of the word. Proverbs 9 and 10 says, The fear of Yah is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is the understanding. So if you fear Yah, not only is that the beginning of knowledge, it's the beginning of wisdom, it's saying the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Now we say holy is set apart. What is holiness? Let's see. Psalms 111 and 2. Let's see what it says. I was going to read the whole thing all this story. It says, Hallelujah. I will praise y'all with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Now, assembly meaning church as well. So, but those are the only ones going to be in the, in, the, in the church with the upright and the righteous. And congregation is also the congregation of Israel. Because it says the church in the wilderness in Acts 7. Who was in the wilderness? Children of Israel. You know what I'm talking about? And anyone who joins to it, because we were a mixed multitude, we just can't come out. So, you know, we're going to keep saying He said, the works of y'all are great, sought out of all of them that have pleasure therein. So he said, his works are great and are sought out by those that have a delight and a pleasure to do what he said. His work is honorable and glorious and his righteousness and joy forever. So he said, his work is respectable and glorious, which if you're doing it, what that means? You're going to be honorable. You're going to be glorious because you're going to put on God's righteousness. And then your right and his righteousness endure forever, which is you gonna live that. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. Yah is gracious and full of compassion. This is what he said. He has given me unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. So if you fear him, he said he's gonna feed you. He said he's mindful of his covenant. He mindful of what he said he's gonna do to those who, who trust and believe and fear him. He ain't gonna forget it. He know if you fear me, I'm gonna give you everything you require. That's why the master told you to take no thought for your life. Don't be worried. Say your life is more than me, and the life is more and, and more than rain. I already know you need this covenant. Do what I say. I got you. I know what I said in my covenant. I'm gonna keep my word. Just keep going. He said he showed his people the power of his work that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. Same thing he did when we came out of Egypt. We got the people strong. But then we just say leave the people through us out. Like we like this here, man. I get that outfit. They like man, get four of them. Take that gold with you and get on around here. You know what I'm talking about? And when we got in the land of Canaan, we got houses fully furnished, vineyards fully planted, 
You know what I'm saying? We had to work for nothing. He gave us all these people stuff. And he said he's going to do it again. He said, look, he's going to do it He said that the work of his hands are very in judgment. All his commandments are sure. Y'all already heard that? They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. Who is that redemption? That's Yahshua the Messiah. He said he made this man redemption for us in 1 Corinthians 30. And he says, uh, and he commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. Because people call themselves reverend, but reverend means respect. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody got no around talking about calling themselves reverend. Ain't even no title and no office in his book. You know what I'm talking about? But he said he commanded his covenant forever. Because he did. He made an everlasting covenant with us. And then he resealed and reconfirmed that covenant through the blood of the Lamb. He said, the fear of Yah is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do the commandments and pray them do forever. So again, so the fear of Yah is the beginning of wisdom. He said, a good understanding have all those that do the commandments. He said, the knowledge of holy is what? Understanding. So what is the holy? That's his commandment. Where are you going to find the holy at? In the law. You know what I'm saying? Because he told me in Hebrews 12 and 14, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Peter quoted Leviticus 19 and 2, and Peter, 1 Peter 1 and 3, Peter said, As it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. So if your Father in heaven is holy, his Son is holy, then what that means you got to be? You got to be holy too, or you ain't going to get in. And he said, The knowledge of holy is the understanding. And he said, The fear of y'all is the beginning of knowledge. So if you got the knowledge of the holy, you're going to have a fear of y'all. And if you got the fear of y'all and the knowledge of the holy, you're going to be saved. If not, you're going to be in trouble. Look at Romans 131, and you'll see why you're going to be in trouble. Now, the previous verses leading up into that is something that we could deal with tomorrow and afternoon for all day. And that's that God will cut you off and get you to a reprobate mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, He will cut you off. And just let you stay where you is. And then you're going to walk hell wide open. Because you decided to continue to walk in the midst. But we're not going to read all these things. But verse 31 it says, without understanding and covenant breaking. So we just heard understanding of doing the commandments. We also heard that the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. And he said, if you're without understanding, which means you ain't keeping the commandments, which means what? You're breaking the covenant. Drop down to verse 32. He said, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So if you without understanding, you're worthy of death. That's a serious thing because you're not keeping the commandments. You're not obeying. You don't have fear. That's a serious thing. You've got to wait and consider that. That if you don't have understanding, this man said you are worthy of death. He said knowing the judgment of God. Knowing the judgment of being without understanding means you are worthy of death. You have to really sit back and ponder that in your brain. Now look at Job 28 and 28. But these are things, whether it be in the uh, modern day Christian church or with many Hebrew Israelite congregations, that they don't want to tell us. They don't really want to tell us that what you don't do what this man say, but you don't do the job. You know what I'm talking about? Like there's consequences and repercussions for disobedience. Nobody wants to deal with these things. They just want you to feel good about yourself or make you feel good about knowing you're an Israelite and knowing that we're the children of God and knowing that, oh, y'all still came and died for our people. And came and redeemed up, but if you found contrary to him, you ain't no different than the heathen. Truth be told, you're the same as an atheist. You're an unbeliever yourself. Job 28 28 says, And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of Yah, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Didn't he say that? that and if you got the fear of Yah, you're going to love the good and hate the evil. So he said, To show forth to depart from evil is to have understanding. He said, Knowledge of the holy is understanding. A good understanding has those that keep the commandments. So if you depart from evil, what you going to be pleasing to? You will be pleasing to the holy. You got fear of y'all. You got wisdom. If that man ain't fearing y'all, he ain't got no wisdom. What wisdom is in him? He rejecting the word of y'all. What wisdom is in? This man don't fear God. This man ain't got no knowledge. He's stupid. Ain't even no need to listen to him. Let's look at Psalm 25. This is what he said about. Now we just heard him say that covenant breakers are worthy of death. 
the Lord is there. He said, What man is he that fear Yah? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall teach. So the Most High said, If you fear Yah, he'll teach you the way he wants to teach. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. So he said, A man that fear Yah, he's going to dwell at ease, and his seed after him will inherit the earth. The secret of Yah is with them that fear him. He will show them his covenant. So he said, All the secrets of the Most High is with those that fear him. And he said, He'll show you his covenant. Which is the Holy Ghost. He'll show it to you. He'll give it to you. If you don't fear, you won't know a secret. That's why you, as we were talking the other day, that's why you see dudes, they only preach on the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Because the secret of y'all is not there revealed to them. He ain't giving them nothing. He ain't telling them nothing. You know what I'm talking about? Because they ain't fearing, they ain't obeying it. So now with that being said, let's look at Psalms 147 and 11. Let's go to the book. What he says. Psalms 147 and 11 says, Y'all take pleasure in them that fear him and those that hope in his mercy. Ain't that what it just said? He said he take pleasure in those that fear him. How, 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 and you just heard that in Malachi 3 and 16. How he ain't going to take pleasure in those that fear him, that respect him, that honor him like a son honors his father? He say, Praise y'all, O Jerusalem, praise thy God, O Zion, for as prince of the bars of thy gate, he has blessed thy children within thee. Then he said, The children of the, those that fear him will be blessed after thee. Because that's where your children are going to be at. As he said in another song, my children are going to be running around, in, or Zechariah, our children are going to be filled with streets of uh, uh, children playing. Old men walking with their cane, everybody in peace. He said, He make peace in thy borders and fill thee with the finest meat. He sent forth his commandments upon the earth, his word one. Very swift. Because when well, y'all speak for his word, don't come. It might not seem swift on the men, but it comes swiftly. And that being said, let's look at Psalm 85 again. He said, Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Now, reviving is mentioned in Hosea 6, 6 chapters we mentioned before. Now, reviving is the blood of the Lamb. Y'all still on the side. I thought we got our reviving from. Show us thy mercy, O Yah, and grant unto us thy salvation. I will hear, hear what God, Yah, will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. So, listen to what he said. But let them not turn again to folly. But like he says, the dog returns to his father, the fool returns to his father. So if he's going to speak to his people and his saints now, it's going to go back to being stupid. He says, surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that, that, that glory may dwell in our land. So he says, his salvation is near those that fear him. So if you don't fear him, guess what that means? His salvation is nowhere near you. Nowhere near you. So don't let these people deceive you and tell you, oh, God's going to take you as he is and he loves you. He told you, if you don't have my fear, my salvation is nowhere near you. He said, mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth. Righteousness shall look down from heaven. And that's referring to y'all children. So that's that great truth that John refers to. That y'all too has, has mentioned right there. You know, let's look at Deuteronomy the 8th chapter. And let's deal with something here about the chastisement. Because this is why people don't have the fear of y'all. Because they don't want to take that chastisement. And that is very, 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 very unjust. So Deuteronomy 8 chapter. And we'll start at the end. We'll actually start at the end. Deuteronomy 8, who said, Thou shalt remember all the ways which thou thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness. Now you talk to our forefathers while they were in the To humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thy heart, whether thou would keep his commandments or no. Because that's what he had to the wilderness, though, was to humble us, to try, try, to prove us, as you heard in Exodus, to see what you do, what I say or not. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou do not, neither did thy fathers know, that he may make thee know that a man does not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of y'all, doth man live. But straight up, you don't live by just what you eat. You live by the word of God. Because you can eat all the sandwiches and bread and, and meat and, and, and fruits and vegetables you want, but you can't live forever. You're going to die. But if you eat this word, you'll live forever. You know what I'm talking about? Like straight up. We ain't got to worry about no, no earthly food, but we get caught up on things of the past. He says, I raiment, wax not old upon thee, 
neither did thy foot dwell in forty years. Thou shalt also consider in thy heart that as a man chastened his son,